Cliff's List interview. Today, my special guest is Trip of Trip Advice, and um, Trip has been in the, uh, I guess, in the dating advice business for quite a while now. And um, I'm sure that he's going to have some very interesting insights for you tonight. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to hearing his um, experiences and and uh, what he has to share with you guys tonight. So maybe you want to start off by telling us a little bit about, um, I guess, how you started in this. You know, how how. Sure. From you know, tell people a little bit about yourself that who might not know anything about you, and uh, and sort of move in from that about your kind of your history with uh, with women, like how uh, uh, from when you uh, I guess were you good in the beginning? Were you were you someone that had to learn? Like, just tell us a little bit about that uh, that sequence of uh, events. Yeah, for sure. I was always a guy who had trouble with women on some level. I thought that the way to attract a woman was to just be in proximity and and be her friend. And so I did that all the way until, I mean, since I can remember uh, when I was much younger in high school and in college. And, you know, a couple times I would get, I would say, like lucky in the sense where maybe there was a woman who I liked and she liked me back. But it only happened, you know, few and far between in my younger years. And I just didn't really... Well, first off, I just didn't I didn't even know that you could learn about getting better with women in my head. You either had it or you didn't. You were either a guy who was popular and good looking or you weren't. And you just kind of did your best. And it was all just luck. You know, obviously, I knew I wasn't completely doing nothing to try and attract women. You know, you, you make yourself look good. You put some gel in your hair. You put some cologne on. You dress you the part. And that was really it, or at least that's what I thought. And then it came to a point in my early 20s where I moved to a whole different state where I didn't know anybody, whole new city. I moved to Los Angeles from Chicago. And moving from L.A. or from Chicago to L.A. was really the the big kicker here because I was moving from a town where it was very easy to meet people. I had a large social circle of friends and people I knew and network of people. And so now I'm in this city where I don't know anybody. And it turns out L.A. is actually one of the hardest places to meet people. It is, uh, I used to call it and still do really, the, the Harvard of dating. It's really, really hard because of the way that the city is laid out. It's not really easy to meet people. And then... Even with online dating, the competition is just fierce. You know, you have a lot of very good looking people in L.A. and a lot of people in L.A. who are always trying to get, you know, the bigger and better thing. So now I'm, I mean, it's, you know, 2007, 2008. I'm in L.A. I know two people, both males, who were also not particularly good with women. And I was really forced to figure something out here if I wanted to have any sort of dating life, whatever that even meant. So I ended up doing a lot of research and, you know, going online, I found books like The Game and and I found all this dating advice, which really mostly came in the form of, of PUA advice or pickup artist advice. And so I devoured as much as I could because I was obsessed with the material because I, I never knew that you could actually get your hands on information that would get you better with women. Like I said, I thought you either had it or you didn't. And so this was very interesting to me. But the funny part about it is as much as I read and watched and listened to all this material online, I never did anything with it because I was, I was too scared. I was too scared to even talk to women. So nothing really happened. And uh, I ended up doing a little bit of online dating, which wasn't very popular at the time because we're talking pre-Tinder, four years before Tinder even came out, where online dating is still kind of like, oh, you met someone online, interesting, or most people were meeting in person. So that was happened to be an utter failure because I just didn't know what I was doing online. I definitely didn't know how to put the right pictures online. And so I, I really rarely meet, met any women at all. And then I was trying I Craigslist. That was an opportunity. You could go on Craigslist and meet people. And and as weird as that sounds now, it was sort of normal that people did it. It was it was up there with meeting women online on the, on the dating apps, I should say. And so that didn't really pan out too well. I met some 
very odd people off of that. And I was really stuck. I had all this information, but I was too scared to talk to women. So one day I finally decided I either give up at this point or I just got to make the leap. So I made the leap and very, very slowly but surely I started to go out. I went out sober as to try to learn from whatever I was trying to do. And I put as much as I could that I learned into practice as I was going out, talking to women, learning how to flirt with them. Honestly, mainly just learning how to talk to a woman I was attracted to while not being under the influence in in person, in real life. And it was quite a disaster in the very beginning. But I kept saying to myself, I could just give up or I could keep going because whatever I was afraid of, it would put me in the exact same spot I was if I just gave up with nothing. So the only option was to keep going. And I did. And after I pushed through a couple of months, I started to see some, some results. I started to get numbers. I started to get dates. I started to talk to approach and attract women who I never thought a million years I'd be able to do that with. I have a bunch of, you know, crazy uh, experiences with messing up and getting really badly rejected. But with what I was doing, the cost was rejection and it was totally worth it because I ended up learning how to get more comfortable socializing. You know how they say, I hate this dating advice, but it's a common piece, which is just be yourself. There is a little bit of truth to that. And I think that when a guy can be comfortable enough to be himself, he actually can attract more women. But the reason why it's bad advice is because how do you how do you learn that? You can't just be like, oh, I'll just be myself and go out there. But what ended up happening was I became so callous to any sort of rejection or awkward moment with a woman that I literally was just being my fun, energetic self without caring, without having any sort of. Uh, outcome dependence on what would happen in the conversation. And then, of course, still with using flirting techniques that I learned and escalation techniques that I learned. And then I started, that's when, you know, when, when it rains, it pours. I was able to, you know, just get dates pretty much whenever I wanted. And I got to a point where I was so proud of all the work that I did. And I started to come up with my own theories, my own ways of, well, I, I could, you know, I could have done this better and that better. And, and whenever I was talking to friends, I would teach them what I learned and what they could do better. And so I started to come up with my own ways of teaching this material. I started a podcast with a buddy for fun, not thinking it was going to turn into a business. And I started to get more confident and comfortable in teaching this stuff. Through what ended up happening was I basically I teach now and what I started to teach when I first started doing this was all the stuff that I wish I had when I was starting. Like I didn't I didn't feel like I really had the best models or systems for meeting and attracting women. I had to piece together a lot of different stuff from a lot of different gurus and then I had to find out my own stuff. When I was going out for those, you know, several years when I was learning it. So then I got to the point where I started teaching guys and, and here we are today. Well, you, there was a point in, in your story where you um, uh, started to get some results. Do you, do you remember anything specific that maybe changed at that point that, uh, you know, you would maybe you can go over that part? <clears throat> yeah, totally. OK, I remember this one night in L.A. So I, could, I, remember, I can't believe I remember this. It was a Tuesday night. That was the, one of the details I remember. It was a Tuesday night, and I was actually in a bar with a couple of my, my wingmen at that time. And it was pretty empty except for like a couple of, of girls. And this is when I started just to get over my approach anxiety. So just right about then, I wasn't like fully confident, but I was starting to have way more conversations. And I was talking to and I, I approached you know a small group of women's like two or three women and I started to kind of focus in on the one that I was more interested in my wings came over they were talking to the other girls and so now that I was starting to get over the approach anxiety the next step that I gave myself was 
being able to physically escalate? How do you start to break the touch barrier? You know, how can I actually go for a kiss in a moment like this when you just met a woman in the past like 10 and 20 minutes? It's funny that it's a lot easier than it sounds. To me, it was like impossible. But that night, I ended up maybe 25, 30 minutes in after talking to her, kissing her at the bar. And it was, it was, that was just one of the many revelations that I had where it's funny, it's going to sound silly, but just going for it and having the guts to go for it and know when to go for it was all that really needed to happen. So a lot of it was just confidence to make a move and then just having a good idea that if I did go for the for the kiss, if I did make the move, that it would work just by, you know, getting the signs that she was attracted. So that was huge for me because I never knew in a million years I'd be able to go out on a Tuesday night completely sober to a loud bar and kiss a, a woman that I was attracted to. And and yeah, that was that was a big revelation for me, just being able to to have the confidence to flirt and make the move where if you caught me even just a year prior to that, it would be hard enough to even go over and to say hello to that woman. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how you started the coaching and uh, teaching guys. Uh, what made you feel that you could uh, get them success, get, get the success besides from yourself? And, and what, where do you focus on when you teach guys? What, what is it that you do that you think makes, gives them the biggest breakthroughs? Cool. So what ended up giving me the confidence to teach guys was that, that podcast that I talked about. We had guys who would listen in and I was just every episode giving my advice that, you know, I started to formulate and all the lessons that I learned. And then I had guys who would write in and say, hey, this this really helped. So that started to give me the confidence to keep on teaching. And then one, once I started the actual coaching program, I put an ad on Craigslist. And I put out, hey, we'll coach you for free and take you out to the bars. I had one guy reply to that, which is funny because, you know, it was 100% free. I just wanted to see, okay, I can coach guys on a podcast, can I really coach you in person? Can I really work with you one-on-one -on -one and get you to a place? And so I took this guy out and funny enough, he shows up. He is not a guy you would ever think would need help with women. He was a popular DJ and not like a, someone that everyone would know, but in his community of DJs, like he had a following, he had, he had fans. He was tall. He was good looking. He was even pretty charismatic. He wasn't awkward with me. I said, dude, what, what's your issue? Why do you have an issue with, with women? He goes, I'm just really shy. I'm really nervous. I go and I DJ and all these women are around me and I don't know what to say to them and I don't know how to talk to them. So I said, okay, let's go to the bar and I'm going to encourage you and, and motivate you to talk to these women. I'll give you a few different lines and a couple flirting techniques. We'll see what happens. So that night we go out and I have him approach a ton of women and he's getting in a conversation He's flirting. He gets a bunch of numbers. After the night was over, he said to me, you know, this was amazing. Like, thank you so much. Like, I, I even though this is free, like, let me give you something. Like, I want to pay you for this. This is so valuable. And I was like, no, man, like, it's free. That's how this works. Like, it's all good. This was, this was helpful for me, too. And one of the things that I taught him that, that night that I teach other guys that helps them and, and, you know, makes big changes is really understanding that everything involved in dating and getting better at dating is a numbers game and is, is based in skill. So what does that mean? You have to look at dating and a, an attraction and approaching as a skill that needs to be honed and something that needs to be worked on. And like any other skill, why would you judge yourself when you're just starting out? If I handed you a guitar, if I handed you a, a digital camera and I was teaching you how to, how to take photos or play guitar, you know, you're going to start from the very beginning 
and you're probably not going to judge yourself too harshly. You're learning how to play the chords. You're learning how to, how to take a picture. You're understanding lighting, strumming, all the different things. So I try to break it down into these really small steps. So when, when guys are learning how to approach women and talk to women, every approach, every interaction, every date, every swipe is just one step closer to them getting better with women. Where a lot of guys, that's not their mindset. They almost treat it like every interaction is, is a big deal. Like every interaction is the championship game. Or every, every interaction is, is the concert that you're performing when you've been practicing for so long on the guitar. When it's just not the case. Every single interaction and every date is a freebie. There's always going to be another woman that you can talk to. And look at this as a game of skill. That mindset helps a lot of guys and it shifts them more towards being less outcome dependent and being more focused on themselves and what they can do better next time. That's what I did. That's what I did when I was learning all this stuff. Like I journaled stuff. I said, okay, tonight I'm going to go out. I had a goal of like, I'm going to talk to 10 women and I'm just going to remember everything as much as I can from the approaches and journal and write it down and Remember my mistakes and what did I do right and what did I do not so right? What can I fix next time? So I was never judging anything except for really the process itself and in a way where I just have to continuously get better. And so everything is a numbers game. The amount of women that you talk to, the amount of dates that you go on, the amount of rejections that you get, none of it really matters. There's no championship game. And it shouldn't ever be looked at as more of a big deal than it really is. Why I think that's the most important shift I can make in guys is because then they start to, over time, of course, not with a snap of my fingers, but they can start to relax a little bit more. And they can start to embody a more confident version of themselves. And also move faster. A lot of guys if they don't do what I said and they take everything so seriously and they get so nervous for the approaches and for the dates, it beats a guy up, you know, rejections hurt. It's tough when you like a girl and you go on two dates and then it ends and, and it slows you down. And then you, then you, you know, you take a break. It's exhausting. It's a lot of work. Well, it's cause you have the wrong mindset. I want guys to go through this process faster so they need to talk to more women swipe on more women go on more dates and look at it as if it's that process it's a pretty controversial way i think of going about it because we have grown up in rom-com hollywood era where everything is serendipitous and you meet that one woman and there's one woman for everybody and it's just a bunch of baloney that's made up from all the TV shows and movies that you've watched over the years. If anyone wants to really get good with women and you want to either get married one day or you just want to play the field and have fun, no matter what the case, you need more volume, especially in today's world. Um, have you picked up any strategies or tactics or ideas that are, call them a little bit different that you don't really hear of from other coaches that that's something that you might te teach when the situation of, uh, calls for it yeah i mean i don't know everyone's material so i would say what what makes me different from a lot of other coaches is my formula for attraction and the way that i teach i make it m more simple and less broken down into this lengthy, you have to remember nine step process. You know, I look back at something like the mystery method, for example, which I mean, was first of all, not shutting him down. That was completely innovative material and his stuff works. And it was amazing. I had an issue with the material. It was hard to learn. It was hard to learn. You had to really study it. You had to really, you had to be like a nerd about it. And as much as I, you know, can be a nerd sometimes, I wasn't able to really put it all together. It wasn't as 
not that it wasn't intuitive. It was, it's very simple to understand. But I'm, I'm talking to women. I'm thinking I'm in all these different sections of, of the, the approach. And it's just too much to remember or too complicated. So I've come up with just more of a simplistic system. So if anything, I would say that from what I know of other people or other gurus and coaches, I like to say mine is the most simple. It's just remembering a few key steps and then getting the volume and that's it. It's really more based on just a few principles rather than having to memorize a lot of lines, having to memorize stories, which by the way, that's another big one. And um, I don't know if, co if coaches still teach this stuff to this day, but a lot of stuff was like memorizing stories and lines, some that weren't even your stories. You would just lie. And so it was, uh, and I tried, I tried because I was just curious to see if it would work, but it just, I wasn't even able to, to get to that point where I'd memorize the stories and the lines and all the things. So as, as the years went on, I realized I wish I had a simpler system. So that's what I have. The system I have is broken down into really three principles in this one formula. I call it TED which stands for tension, entertainment, and dominance. And as long as you understand those principles and you use those th really not even just in your approach, like throughout everything, it's, it's when you meet her, it's on the date, it's during an approach, it's in a relationship. It's, you just use it all the time. You use Ted all the time. And that's all you have to know. And most of the other things that people try to worry about just like don't matter. There's just a lot of fluff out there. Like I see other coaches who teach such just fluff that doesn't, it just doesn't matter. So for example, you know, I teach one line. There's one line that you could use 24 seven and it's not something I gatekeep or you, you got to pay to get the line. You got to do coaching. You're like, I'll tell you what the line is right now. It's stupid. It's simple. It's nothing fancy. And you can use it anytime you want to meet a woman anywhere in any situation. I think it's pretty cool to have one line that you can always use and memorize and just know forever. I'm I see curious. other coaches today. What'd you say? I'm curious. Yeah. It's not mind blowing, but it works. So I'll tell you the line real quick. The line is this. You go up to a woman and you say, Hey, two seconds. I wanted to come and meet you. Hey, two seconds. I wanted to come and meet you. And I would use that word for word because each, each element you know, is really important in there. But I see these other coaches, they say, this is what you should say when you're at a party or at a grocery store or like if you're at a bar, she's with a friend. This is what you want to say to both of them to open up the cup. It's like, really, dude, you, you want to like memorize. Do you really want to memorize 10 lines, 10 situations and exactly what to do? That's a lot. That's more work than needs to be done. There's something called the 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule is... Uh, I think it's called Pareto's principle where you just have to do a few things that have the largest effect. So that means that 20% of the things that you're going to do have 80% of the effect, meaning I could teach you a hundred different dating tips and 20 of those tips are going to make 80% of your results. And so I, I really have done that with, uh, with my dating advice. It's the 80, 20. You know, I could give you 10 different lines to go and approach a woman, but let's be real. You only need one. So that's one example of how I just simplify it. What do you, uh, do you have any insights on in how you deal with the, some of the issues that guys come up with when, when you coach them? Like guys are just shy, introverted, uh, or have hangups about uh, their looks, their age, their uh, uh, their weight, their height, this type of thing. Yeah, you're saying like, how do I deal how with people? How do you deal who... with those? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, first of all, we should only focus on what we can control. Okay. So some guys are going to come to you. They're going to list all these physical attributes that are they they think are wrong or not attractive. So we focus on what we can control. Let's say you're someone who is short. Can we do anything about that? I mean, yeah, I guess you could. 
technically we can give you some lifts to put in your shoe. You can even get sur- some crazy surgery to extend your legs. It exists, but I'm just talking without those weird exceptions. Nothing you can do. Okay. So we're not going to focus on that. Um, what about I'm overweight? Could we fix that? Could we control that? We can control that. Okay. So then that's something that should be worked on. Let's say you're bald. Okay. What can you do? Well, not much. I mean, I guess you can get, again, one of those weird exceptions, hair plugs or something like that. If we're not going to those routes, yeah, you probably just want to, you know, shave your head pretty tight and that's really it. So what can we control? We can control our weight. We can control what we wear. We can control our grooming. So if we just focus on a couple of those things, again, the 80-20, then that's good enough. Okay, so groom yourself properly. Wear the right style of clothes that are going to make you look your most attractive for your body type. And that's it. I would always be working. I call these outer qualities. What you just described a second ago is all these are outer qualities. Outer qualities are something that maybe is not an overnight fix, something you might work on for 10, 20 years. You should always be optimizing. You know, over time, you should always be optimizing things. You know, work on the first things that you can to make the quickest results, getting a haircut, grooming yourself properly, and getting some new clothes. But then as time goes on, you're going to want to, you know, go to the gym, work out a little bit more. Maybe you focus on some skincare routines, things like that. And that's, you know, all those details are fine. They're not going to be the 80 20, but you do those over time. So you're always optimizing your looks. But then there's your inner qualities. That's your behavior. That's how you talk to women. That's how you present yourself to women. That's your charisma. It's your confidence. It's the intangible stuff that you can't see. That stuff is stuff that is going to have a a larger effect faster, I would say. So I think that working on, let me just be clear, working on your looks, your outer qualities and inner qualities, it all matters. I'm never telling a guy like, yeah, just work on, only work on this, work on all of it. Look your best, act your best. But I found that guys who maybe aren't the most physically attractive, aren't the tallest, still are a little bit overweight, after they just do some simple grooming, but then they start to learn how to become more confident, charismatic, and comfortable around women, they actually start to see results. You don't have to wait 10 years to you know, lose all that weight, get super in shape or whatever else you're going to do. You can really learn a lot faster and get faster results by putting a major, a more of a major emphasis on your inner qualities. Cause you could really technically in less than a week, fix your outer qualities. You can, you can, and technically you can do it in 12 hours if you really wanted to. In 12 hours, you can go get a haircut, you can go get a shave, and you can, you can go to a store. You can say, hey, I need some cool clothes. You can get a person who works there to pick out a, an outfit for you. And you're done. And you're good to go. The rest of the time, you work on the inner qualities. And to connect back to what I was saying earlier, like working on TED, tension, entertainment, dominance, approaching, getting on those dates, all of that work is going to take you a lot farther, faster. Maybe you can go into a little bit more detail about that TED theory of yours. Yeah, for sure. So tension, entertainment, dominance. Tension is short for sexual tension. Entertainment is, are you enjoying and is she enjoying the interaction between you two? Dominance is simply leading. So you're always going to be leading the interaction. Okay. So sexual tension, that is just basically flirting. You have to know how to flirt. You have to understand how to build tension with the woman. And if you don't do that, you end up most likely in the friend zone. Entertainment is you got to be having a good time. Right? RSD used to call it self-amusement. But I take it a little bit of a step further because you can have all the time – that's fun in the world, but she also has to have a good time. But it's not about entertaining her. It's about 
you're having a good time and she's having a good time. You're providing this fun experience for both of you. And then D, dominance, which is leading, means you'll be the one who's approaching. You'll be the one who's setting up the date and texting first. You'll be the one who's going to ask on the second date. You're the one who's going to make the move physically for the kiss, for sex, even really technically all the way to marriage. So those are the principles of attraction. If you can get into an interaction and you can flirt and you can converse and you can talk to her in a way that is not just talking about, I don't know, average boring stuff. What are the things that you want to talk about? What's interesting to you? A lot of this stuff is actually very easy, but guys, they have this block. Like they don't allow themselves to go there. They're so nervous when talking to women that they're all choked up. They're really stiff. They don't really know what to say, even though you can literally say anything. Whereas if I were to go into a guy's head and like, you know, hypothetically do some surgery and remove something from their brain that allowed them to just not worry about anything in the interaction and just have fun, you would have a million things to talk about. You can talk about anything. It doesn't matter. It's funny too. Cliff is like, and you probably know this. It's not even like what you say. It's more like how you say it. You know, you can go up to a woman and you can say the same words, but in 50 different ways. So it's about how you're coming off and how you're showing up in an interaction, your presence. So that's Ted. All right. Well, today we have kind of a unique circumstances in our social worlds. Um, what do you coach guys in terms of ways for them to meet women today? I want guys to get as much volume as possible. So I'm very pro any way possible that exists. I want you to get on five dating apps. I want you to go to social events throughout the week. I want you to do day approaches, night approaches. I want you to have social circle. Really, I want you to meet women anywhere except for work. And I'd even maybe even take out the gym. You know, I want you to be meeting. So why not work and why not the gym is, is really work is dangerous it, for many reasons. One, I mean, you can get in trouble, sexual harassment issues, or maybe she works with you and then you guys do date, then you break up. How you're seeing your ex at work every day. That's not a fun life anymore. The gym, also not my ideal place to meet women. The gym should be your sanctuary to work out. And you're not going to get a lot of volume there. And you're making it harder on yourself. Because I know it's funny. I know a lot of guys ask, what about the gym? What about the gym? Because they see a lot of beautiful women there because women who are at the gym are usually fit, right? So, yeah, if you have your odd situation where you see one woman, it kind of works out and you do an approach, like, that's fine. But don't use that as the place and don't use work as your place. Anywhere else, sky's the limit. And I want you to put, I tell guys, hour of swiping a day, several hours of approaching per week. Putting together as many situations as possible to push yourself in front of women. Because in 2024, and I don't see this ever changing, so if someone's watching this in 2034, I'm sure it's the same. Whereas it's very easy to meet people online and social media and the internet has changed a lot of how dating works today and how men and women interact. So it's not like 1950s where... At that point, when you were dating, you only had access to so many people. You didn't really even need to get the volume in. It was just a different way of meeting people. Also, you were forced to like meet people going out in like the 50s and 60s and 70s because there was no online dating. So there's a lot more interactions happening. And I don't want to go too down a rabbit hole here, but just the way that you know women date today and women date 50 years ago, it's just that's a lot different. So you have to get your volume in. Because you're dealing today in 2024 
with flaky women, women who have so many options because of online dating that they they become even more selective. So that's why you get more flaking. And that's why you get also women who, um, you know, might go on one date with you and go eh, next because they know they can get a lot of other men. You have any? They have this kind of false sense of value. Yeah. Do you have any uh, tips in terms of um, getting the, I guess, relationship started or, or, or maintained? Uh, like, for example, you, you meet the woman, you know, we're, we've talked about meeting them. Now, once you've met them, you know, what do you do with them? And basically, uh, you know, what suggestions you might have in terms of uh, avoiding uh, uh, flaking and, uh, you know, uh, maybe you have a lot of guys that end up in the friend zone. There's some ways that you can give them some, some succinct advice to, to avoid those kind of mistakes. I don't know, just a little bit more about the relationship elements. Sure. Like when you start dating, basically, is what you're saying. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Well, never start any any interaction out as friends. So if you're going to meet with a woman that you're interested in, it should always be under the under the idea that you guys are on a date together. You might even want to say the word date if you're not so sure if she knows what's going on. A lot of guys are afraid to do that and they think it's really cheesy, but then I tell them to do it and guess what? The woman is like, oh, I didn't see you that way, blah, 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 blah. You just, you just saved yourself so much time. So you should be flirting right away. Everything should be under the idea of a date. And then once you start to get to that point where, okay, it is a date and you want to start something off with a woman, A, you should be dating other women still. If you go on a first or second date with a woman, and you like her, do not in your head go one itis and just focus on her because the chances that it's going to continue with her are lower, right? You're only going to have so many girlfriends in your life. I mean, how many girlfriends can one guy have in his life? Like, if you get to even like six or seven, that's quite a bit. But six, the number six and seven is very low, right? Out of all the women you're dating. So, my point here is that don't put any women on a pedestal. Continue to date multiple women at a time until maybe you get to like, I don't know, date eight, nine, ten. At that point, it's starting to become a little bit more serious. You know, you can focus in on her. And then with that, to get to that point, you only want to see a woman once or twice a week. That way you're going to be able to maintain more attraction. If you see them too much, the fire might burn out really fast. You might appear too needy, which is very unattractive to a woman. So you only want to see her a couple times per week. You don't want to be texting her all the time. Even though texting is a very common way for people to communicate these days. Even though that is the case. So a lot of people, you know, might say that's old school thinking trip. You don't understand. Like everyone's texting. It doesn't matter if everyone's doing it. It doesn't mean it's going to be the best practice to keep attraction alive. A lot of guys will text, respond to text messages really fast, and they say something wrong. They end up kind of showing like a side that's really needy. You want to connect with a woman, do it in person. If you're wanting to meet more women and one to two times a week is not enough for you and you want to then date another woman, meet another woman until you find someone that is going to then meet your three non-negotiables. So maybe you like to hear about this, Cliff. Like I said, you keep everything simple. In dating, if you're looking for a relationship, or even if you're not, whether you're looking for casual or serious, you need to have three non-negotiables. That's the three things you're looking for in a woman. So three things you're looking for in a woman. You figure out what those are. That's now your filter. Your filter for if you want to see this woman again. Guys don't have a lot of non-negotiables. Their non-negotiable is, she's cute and nice. That's not it. That's default. She better be cute and nice. What are you looking for? What do you want? Who do you want her to be? Does she, do you want her to be someone who can, who's really active and lives an active lifestyle? Do you want her to be someone who's religious or not religious? Do you want her to want to have kids or not have kids? Know what you're looking for so then you can filter. 
So we're basically doing a few things here to summarize. We're filtering with our three non-negotiables. We're filtering for high level of interest. So that means to simplify any situations where you're wondering if a girl likes you, we're only dealing with women who have a high level of interest. High level of interest means they're showing up on dates, they're responsive to you, and you guys are getting physical with each other. Anything other than that, she's probably not that interested, I'd be done trying to ask her out and text her. So we use those as filters, and then we date multiple women at a time, and we don't see them every single night and text them all the time. Do you have any tips for turning them around when they're not interested? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have I have one or two tips which I can give you. It just it it rarely works, and not because my advice doesn't work or it's bad advice. It's just because once a woman doesn't like you or doesn't see you in a in a sexual light or you're in the friend zone or she just doesn't like you at all for any other reason, women are are different creatures than men. They're not they're not easily, I should say, swayed, nor can you really pull them the other direction because women are, are very very attracted to a man's behavior. And so they're not always looking for all the physical attributes. We're like a, a guy even if she doesn't, you know, he doesn't really respect the girl, but she's hot. You know, eight out of ten guys would probably still sleep with the girl. Women, that's not happening. Women are looking a lot at how you act in your personality. So that means that if she doesn't like you, you have to make a massive shift in who you are as a person. Which, A, why would you want to do that? And B, it sounds like a waste of time. So my tip, if I had to give one, one is... If she doesn't like you, you actually need to leave her alone for a few months mm -hmm. and you have to come back later and you have to try to reattract her with, I don't know, it depends who you are. You know, I'd be guessing if you were not attracting her in the first place, you didn't understand the principles of attraction. So maybe you come back a couple of months later, assuming she's still available, assuming she still responds to your text or call and you reattract her by using you know, the TED formula and and having the more attractive traits to display, so to speak. Um, OK, have you uh, had some really remarkable successes from some of the guys you've coached that gone from like really bad to really quite outstanding in terms of how successful they became? Oh, yeah, 100 um, percent worked with one guy. He's 5'2". I won't say what ethnicity, uh, but he was an American and he had an accent. And we got him a beautiful girlfriend after coaching him, after pretty much getting shut down by almost every single woman and then getting him to the point where he understood how to build attraction to the point where she was so into him that he was like trying to slow it down because he wasn't ready for a relationship yet because he wanted to keep on playing the field. But then eventually they ended up getting together officially. I've had guys who, you know, text me a couple times a year who I've worked with back in the day who say they've gotten engaged and, and gotten married. I mean, I have guys who were virgins who ended up, you know, being able to sleep with the kinds of women they want to. I mean, it's really endless the amount of results I've been able to see with guys, they've just been able to, I mean, I've had guys who even, as you probably know this, Cliff, when you get good with women, it starts to just make you like a better person. I don't know. You just start to feel more confident, more, more of a man, and you start to do better in all these different areas of your life, like work, you start to work out more, take care of your health, take care of your money. So... I've had guys who've just come back to me saying, yeah, man, even though you didn't really specifically help me in these areas other than with, you know, than just meeting and talking to women, 
now I built my own business. I got this promotion. You know, I've made more friends. I've had guys who, um, sadly, like they were super depressed on, on the, on the brink of hurting themselves, so to speak. And, you know, a lot of guys, when they don't have friends, they don't have a woman around them, they feel very lonely. It's a very depressing world they live in. So we've been able to get guys out of that funk and get them to a place where they just love life again. So, yeah, it's been it's been pretty crazy um, seeing all the results. And, you know, it's not just, you know, me who's doing this and my coaching team who's doing this. Like, we set it up. But I got to give credit to the guys who we help because in coaching, it's a collaboration. I can't approach for them. I can't get rejected for them. You, no matter what, have to go through your own journey. So I like to say that I set it up and they knock it down. Well, I think you've covered a lot of interesting ground tonight. Uh, I don't want to keep you too late. Um, maybe you can tell guys uh, what they can do to follow up and learn more from you. If you have some products that there may be available, what, uh, you tell them a little bit about how to access your coaching and whatever you have available for, for someone who wanted to learn more from you. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, first, if you, if you're just wanting to get, you know, more free stuff, I have a podcast, a lot of episodes It's called how to talk to girls. You can find that anywhere. The podcasts are, are, um, available. And then I also have a course. So if you're looking to kind of self teach, it's an eight to 10 hour course. It's called get her hooked, get her hooked.com. You'll learn everything about the Ted formula. And if you're a guy who's ready to make serious leaps, faster leaps, and you're interested in coaching, we're doing free calls with guys who want to just learn about how coaching works. Then you can go to trip advice, coaching.com. You can book a call with me and my team. We'll talk to you about how it works. Well, that's great. Look, I really appreciate your taking the time this evening with me. And um, I'm sure the guys are going to get some, you know, good ideas out of uh, what you've shared. And um, hopefully we'll be able to do this again sometime soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care.